What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. Big reminder, tonight I've got Six Hex and Hammer live at 5.30 Eastern over on uh, my Rumble page. And or if you want to watch on QuarterCast, both are linked in the pinned comment in the comments below. Rumble is better, but having you is best. So wherever you want to watch, I hope I'll see you there. Got lots to talk about the election, primaries, things like that. Um, probably no drama tonight. Probably just straight business. I don't want to suck sticks into that. I don't think he's a part of that kind of stuff. So anyway, interesting timeline getting put forth. Some questions being asked about uh, the lawsuit. Many people believe that there is some sort of coordinated effort to cause chaos in quote unquote, our side. And as each day goes by, I feel like <laughs> that could be the truth. Uh, you know, turmoil at Daily Wire seems to be dying down, hopefully. The Louder with Crowder lawsuit, which is insane, um, infighting all over the place. And it's an election year. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we can vote Biden out of office because he is terrible. So hopefully this is a tempest in the teapot and everything kind of gets done this week. That said, interesting timeline put out there um, by little Miss Jacob, who is a, a solid follow on Twitter, by the way. If you would need another reason to follow her, she sued Taylor Lorenz. So that's always fun. Uh, interesting stuff. If you enjoy the video, make sure you, leave it, you subscribe and, uh, and or follow. It helps a ton. She writes, Pay attention to the timing of the hit pieces about Crowder. May, July, and August 2023. New York Magazine, who just smeared Andrew Huberman, by the way, published a hit piece by Matt Steeb, who also writes about hmm, politics. How did former Lauder with Crowder employees find so many PR contacts within liberal media? It makes sense why Lauder with Crowder wanted to see if Jared was the one who leaked the stuff to the liberal media, and it makes sense why Lauder with Crowder filed the 202 petition two months later in October 2023. Are you following? I can tell you unequivocally, I had liberal media reach out to me asking if I would comment on the Crowder stuff, asking me if I had dirt on him. Of course, I sent them most usually a picture of Count Dankula's balls. People from the Daily Beast reached out, people from um, the Atlantic, I think. I can't remember exactly. I don't respond to journalists. Um, even if they're trying to quote unquote, tell my side, you know, they're not going to, uh, but I think that's a very interesting point that she's pointing out here. So you have the intelligentsia, uh, in May of 2023, Steven Crowder, uh, whipped it out at work. Allegedly media, I Steven Crowder's ex staff speaks out on antics. This is in July. Four Steven Crowder staffers exit show after interrogations on, quote, insane NDAs. This is in August 8th, 2023. Of course, then you see the Daily Beast, who did reach out to me for dirt on Steven. May 2023, you know, all this stuff about Crowder. Now, it may all be true. I don't know. I wasn't there. Really trying to be, you know, yes, I am you know, friendly with Steven Crowder, but I don't know. Maybe this stuff happened. I don't know. Nobody filed any police reports. Nobody filed any lawsuits. They just leaked things to the media. Why would you do that? Then you see Steven Crowder, obviously in May, August, these various hit pieces come out. Interesting timing. This reminds me of when I was unwinding what Taylor Lorenz and New York Times did to me. Lorenz's article was all about my former clients pretending my contracts were unfair, all in an effort to take me down. So Lorenz's agency could steal my clients. It's the exact same playbook on real. Steven Seal writes, you're busting this thing wide open. Remember the influencers who push these narratives. I know grifter is a term that becomes quite overused. What's interesting is, you know, all these leaks would be illegal under NDAs. She then also writes an interesting thread here. And I do want to give her, why am I not? I was following her. Did I just click on follow? Okay, so I'm going to follow her back. Okay. Quote, it seems Jared Monroe's departure from Louder with Crowder, this is interesting, in 2018, didn't unfold as might 
he might have hoped. Over time, his frustration with Crowder could have deepened, possibly contemplating ways to retaliate, such as taking clients or staff with him when he left or taking him down years later. Well, possible. We can't know that for sure. Um, <clears throat> yet the term, quote, legal abuse, Jared mentions, seems to stem from a legal challenge that didn't even start until October 2023, five years later, linked to a petition and Jared's reluctance to share communications or undergo deposition. Despite resisting, Jared lost that battle. Now, understand, there is, I'm not saying that judges are always right or that the system's always right, but it's also not always wrong. And there is a reason he lost that in court. This raises questions about the nature of his legal costs incurred during this period. So how did Jared accure, accrue all these legal costs, expenses, and what for? That's a good point, because up until 2023, he shouldn't have had any, as far as I know, right? At least of what is out there publicly. Here's a condensed timeline of Jared Monroe's legal entanglements and possible legal expenses. Jared Monroe leaves the letter with Crowder, hires a lawyer for separation agreement negotiations, possibly including a carve out in the non solicitation agreement to allow future work in the field. Estimated legal hours five to 10. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to say who knows. I'm not going to use her estimates on, I'm not a law expert. I don't think she is either. But the timeline is le still legit. Jared starts a new job in 2018, receives a cease and desist from Crowder, and subsequently, quote, unlawfully terminated from his position. Details on that employer and the legality of the firing are unclear. He has never named that employer. He has never provided evidence that he was fired because of things that Crowder said. He has only said that. Maybe it's true, but he hasn't proven that. I think if I was going to try and get you know, public support, if I was going to try to drive public support around me, that's something I would say. I'd be like, yo, look, I had this job. I was just trying to leave. And this maniac followed me and, and got me fired. October, 2023, Monroe sees, receives a cease and desist and a rule 202 petition from Crowder, marking the start of more formal legal actions. In March, 2024, Five months later, Jared Monroe talked about battling over the Rule 202 petition for a while. That was about what he had to share with the court, and he needed to answer questions under oath. Under oath, It seems like he had a chance to argue about what information he should give and if he had to do a deposition. The judge decided to go ahead and do it, meaning Monroe's arguments didn't stop the court from asking for this information. Estimated legal hours? I'm not going to guess. She says 20 to 60. I, I, I don't know. Who knows? Right? Why so much pushback here on the request? My question is, what's in it for Jared to fight to, at this point to fight turning over communications and a deposition and spend all that money on lawyers for this? I agree. That's what I've said all along. I don't understand what in the hell he's doing. Just move on, bro. If there's something so heinous that happened there, then you'd leak it. It seems personal. He got awfully offended when I said it might be, by the way. By the way, have you clicked the follow button or the subscribe button down below? Hopefully you have. Hopefully I will earn that today. It's really important to me and uh, it helps a ton. It appears the judge ruled in favor of Jared Monroe providing a deposition and text communications, meaning he ruled against Jared, possibly including messages with Steven Crowder's ex, competitors like Jeremy Boring. The contents of these, quote, texts with friends could be quite revealing or damning. There might be significant information in Jared Monroe's communications, possibly discussing strategies against Stephen Crowder's business or reputation. It's not just about casual venting among friends. While it's essential not to jump at conclusions, the follow those following the saga should be keep probing for the truth. Efforts to keep Jared's quote, texts with friends and his criticism of his old boss under wraps are intense, but I suspect the real game here is about those texts. Who uh, could they be the main prize for Crowder's haters? It's certainly questionable, right? It's certainly possible, questionable, uh, curious. Why? It is my opinion. I have no evidence for this. This is my opinion that there are damning things in his text messages and that he did co-conspire with uh, Hillary during their divorce because we know they did. We had already seen text. Is it possible he was reaching out to the Daily Wire? Is it possible he was reaching out to the Blaze? 
I don't know, all that's possible. But what I do know is things didn't heat up until he inserted himself into their divorce. Okay, until he started worrying about Crowder having custody of his kids, until the, the, <laughs> the sweet potato got shipped to their undisclosed location. You know, he says, even in the court with relentless amendments to their 202 petition, which he lost, by the way, my ex player was formally awarded their request for my oral deposition, which as far as I know, he didn't even do. They didn't make him do it. Any document of communication with my friends that they believe may provide any other avenue to sue me or others. I believe it's or others. Why would you sue Jared Monroe? He's broke. I don't think that Steven Crowder is interested in ruining Jared's life based on anything I've seen. You can hate Jared. I'm sorry. You can hate Steven Crowder. There are lots of people that do. Every time I say something positive about him, people unsubscribe or people get pissed at me. But I'm, I truly am looking at this from an objective standpoint. And I ask the people who, who keep saying that you know Crowder's the bad guy here. Yes, I didn't like that he yelled at his wife either. But I also didn't like that she deleted 2,000 hours of footage as well as footage from that exchange that could have added context. If there's additional context and he's just being an asshole, okay, so be it. By the way, from what I can tell, Jared has not filed any lawsuit. The guy represent him, re representing him clarified that. Jared is not a lawyer. These are very technical things, so he may have simplified it. The Rule 202 petition and the lawsuit are both also illegal under the NLRA because they seek to enforce an illegal clause. The agency would order the employer to drop them. At this point, to be honest with you, I think it would be an absolute W if Crowder just dropped them. Let him let this guy do what he wants to do. Take, you know, take it away. Take the power away. Let him release whatever he's going to release because I have a strong suspicion it's nowhere near as damning as people think it is. I think this guy got a little too involved. You see, Viva Freight, the innocuous tech messages to which you refer, is this, is this reported by Tipcast? I'm just trying to understand the details. In which he said, I don't want Steven Crowder anywhere near those kids, referring to Hillary's Steven's young twins. That's not innocuous. You know what I mean? These are not innocuous. You were deeply involved in another man's divorce, trying to separate him between with his kids, and then you and then you raised a hundred thousand dollars. By the way, fine, go on, use that money to launch your podcast, to pay for your kids college or whatever. That's what you should do. You shouldn't be handing it over to lawyers. Jared Monroe has not made a case anywhere that he's been unable to work. He's not made a case. He's went on podcasts talking about how he's hosting comedy events and he's got some agency where he promotes this stuff. So what is he talking about? He was on a podcast with Corey Black Garrett. He sounded like he was doing just fine. I think he got caught up in the honeypot. I think maybe he really thinks or thought he was doing something good. And Hillary Crowder and Steven Crowder are going to long forget about him. And he's going to wish he had this money back. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it. And we'll see you tonight at 530 Eastern.